In episode six, Joe is heading to Beck's apartment where Peach is staying, and he's very nervous that his cover is going to be blown. And as soon as he gets there, Peach looks at him and says, I'm on to you. Joe gets even more nervous, but she says, you said I had a stalker, and that's clearly what this is. Annika makes mention that most of the time, a person's stalker is actually somebody that they know. Peach asks Beck to make her some tea, and Joe follows her into the kitchen. And after some small talk, Peach comes in and ignores Joe completely and says to Beck, I'm really feeling like I need less male energy. Can you ask Joe to please leave and take his gift with him? By the way, the gift was a balloon. Beck says, I'm pretty sure he heard you because Joe is literally four feet away from them. And Peach says, I just don't want to deal with confrontation right now, and walks out. Beck apologizes. Joe agrees to leave, but before he does, he notices that there's plane tickets in Peach's purse. And when he goes to check it, Peach has booked herself and Beck two tickets to Paris. So Joe files this away and heads home, where before he can even get through his building's door, he sees Paco, who immediately apologizes. Paco's mom comes out and tells Paco to go in the house, and Paco's mom gives Joe some brownies, as a thank you, tells him I owe you one, and then asks him not to press charges against Ron. She says, I really feel like he's a changed man after this. And while Joe tells her I'm not going to press charges, he says people don't change. Later that day, Joe heads to work where Beck meets him there and lets him know that she's heading to Peach's family's house in Greenwich for the weekend. Joe wants to know what she plans on doing about school and, more importantly, the relationship. But all Beck can focus on is the fact that a couple days ago she almost died. Joe shoots back that you're risking your career for the same person who tried to sabotage it just a week ago. Beck gets upset and Joe says you're being manipulated by Peach. If you become your own person, Peach can't manipulate you anymore. And she knows that. He also says that the suicide was for show and she was never in real danger. And you could see Beck getting more and more angry as he continues to talk. He finishes it off with, you know she's in love with you, right? And that was the straw that broke the camel's back and she leaves the bookstore pretty upset. But now he needs to know where this Greenwich house is. So he heads downstairs in the basement and thanks to a quick Google search, he finds out that it's less than an hour away. And as he's driving there that night a deer jumps in front of the car and he swerves to miss it but bangs his head on the steering wheel he's got a really nasty gash and probably a concussion and when he comes to the next morning he's having a hallucination with his old girlfriend candace he has to shake this off pretty quickly because a cop car has arrived behind him wondering what he's doing there and if he's okay and the cop is pretty suspicious and to make matters worse for joe he doesn't want to give a lot of information joe tells the cop that he was robbed and doesn't have his license or identification the cop gives him a sobriety test but he passes that joe explains that it was just a bunch of kids and they stole his wallet wallet and his wedding ring, but the cop notices they didn't steal his watch, and he's wearing Benji's $80,000 watch. Through some fast talking, though, Joe is able to avoid the cop running his plates, and the cop lets him go. And as he's driving away, the cop thinks better of it and writes down the plate number to run it later. So Joe heads off to the Greenwich house where the girls have actually left for the day to go on a shopping trip. And after he breaks in, he locates a medicine cabinet, takes some painkillers, and starts trying to stitch up his head wound. But he actually passes out. And when he passes out, he once again has a hallucination that involves Candace. He's awoken when the girls come back from their shopping trip. And every time he hears Peach and every time he sees Peach through a door crack, he gets more and more annoyed that she's even there. He doesn't feel like she's safe. And the hypocrisy of the situation hits an all-time high when he gets annoyed at Peach for watching Beck take a bath. So he's watching Peach watch Beck. He also needs to use the bathroom, though, and he's in a tight bind, so he just grabs a jar and pisses in that, and somehow nobody hears it. After he zips up, though, he wants to get Peach away from Beck, so he goes downstairs and opens a door and closes it, and it works because she gets suspicious and heads downstairs and wants to know where that sound came from, and then she goes into her purse and grabs a gun. And Joe sees this, and it makes him further believe that Peach is not safe. But then the doorbell rings because Peach is promised Beck a surprise. And the surprise is a guy named Raj that they're all familiar with. But it's clear that Beck hasn't seen him in a long time. And since Joe doesn't know this guy, he is even more concerned. But Joe isn't the only one who didn't really want to see Raj because Beck also didn't really want to see him. She pulls Peach to the side and says, what is he doing here? What happened to all this? I don't need male energy right now. And Beck is definitely still mad at Peach, but she puts on a good face and heads back in the room with Raj. All three of them do pills and start to drink. And as that's going on, Joe is walking through the house trying to find that mysterious gun. He even starts thinking he never saw it until finally he locates it in a drawer. But the group is coming upstairs and he has to hide under the bed because the group has decided to do a platonic group massage. But this platonic massage turns into a possible threesome real fast when Peach starts making out with Beck. After a little bit, Beck stops it and says, I, I thought this was platonic. I, I have a boyfriend. I can't do this. Peach just says she's no fun. I don't have a boyfriend. And she starts banging Raj on the bed as Joe hides underneath it. Beck heads downstairs and actually starts texting Joe, saying she's not mad at him anymore, and Joe once again apologizes. And then Beck says that she doesn't want to go to Paris. Because earlier in the day, Peach told Beck that her family is giving her a house in Paris to go over and renovate, and she wants Beck to come with her and live out there.
She says, leave your old life behind. You can come, you can write. But that's really not Beck's dream at this moment. And the next day, when the two wake up, Beck tells Peach that while she appreciates the offer, she's not going over to Paris with her. A little bit of a fight ensues, and Beck says, well, what was that last night? Look, I know your family. I know that they wouldn't be okay with And Peach just immediately cuts her off and says, no, I'm sorry, you have issues. Beck then tries to slow this argument down a little bit and says, I, I came here to take care of you. But Peach says, oh, that's rich. Go ahead, go back to your bookstore boyfriend. So Peach walks out to her Uber, and Joe is watching all this go down while still holding the gun. He's watching Beck go out to her Uber, but he doesn't see that Peach has snuck up from behind him, and she knocks him out. When Joe wakes up, Peach is now holding the gun, demanding answers. Why are you in my house? And then it clicks. Oh my god, you're my stalker. You stole my book. You stole my computer. And since Joe doesn't really have a lot of options, he comes clean and says, yep, you're right. But because I stole your laptop, I also have all those folders of pictures of Beck. And my associate Paco is informed that if I don't come home safely, he's going to distribute it all over the internet with traces back to you. He then tells Peach that no matter how hard you want Beck, she's never going to want you like that. Eventually, Joe makes a run for it, but he gets shot by Peach in the leg. As Peach gets closer, he plays possum, and once she turns her back on him, he trips her and ends up killing her. He makes it look like it was a suicide and even writes a very well-written suicide note, saying goodbye to her friends and family, and then he heads home in the car. And it's ironic that he's heading home in the car because the cop that originally pulled him over has just gotten the plate tag back for that very car. The dispatcher lets the cop know that the car hasn't been listed as stolen as the cop is staring at the jar that Joe pissed. In. Joe immediately heads to his neighbor's house, knocks on the door, and when she answers, he says, You owed me one, and she stitches him up. Joe doesn't want to answer any questions as to what happened, but she lets Joe know that she kicked Ron out because Joe was right. People don't change, and Paco needs a good, strong male influence on his life, and Ron isn't it. As he's sitting there getting stitched up by his neighbor, he gets a text from Beck saying, Oh my God, Joe, Peach is dead. In the ensuing days, Beck is in such a daze, she doesn't even notice Joe's injuries. Although it's a good sign because she invited Joe to the funeral. Thank you for watching this recap. If you do not see the next one up in the corner right there on the end screen, don't worry, it'll be up shortly. Please consider following the channel. That'd be cool. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you don't, there's a thumbs down button for a reason.